Welcome to Bon Jovi Discussions. Uh, today, tonight, uh, the tour had finally started, the April 2022 tour. So with me, uh, my buddy Kevin, who uh, actually went to the show tonight, unfortunately because of my my uh, career, I wasn't able to uh, go this weekend uh, to go to uh, Omaha to open a night, which I was dying inside all night, but I posted a bunch of updates on Twitter. Um, but Kevin, I'll get to see you here very soon we're, we're doing milwaukee we're doing rally and we're doing nashville so we got three shows coming up here that i'm just dying for you know milwaukee is, just, is three days away so i'm really excited but anyway how you doing buddy you should 100 i can still hear myself i hear an echo yeah that, that's that's fine I don't, I don't hear an echo on my end okay cool uh now it's now it's fine now it died down okay cool um but yeah, I, I'm I'm happy to be doing this. Um, you know, tonight was absolutely incredible. Um, yeah. This was one of the best Bon Jovi shows and set lists I have ever seen. Um, I don't want to give too much away just yet. You know, we'll we'll talk about the uh, show here in just a second. But um, you know, you got. To I'm excited. I'm excited, yeah. you know, to be you doing got Rally and, uh, you know, Milwaukee and Nashville, of course. So that's going to be a hell of a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. and, um, I, I can't think right now. I'm still, like, all wired and excited, you know? And, uh, you know, you got to see it live. But one of the greatest things about technology and the Bon Jovi fandom is that we all try to help each other. So, obviously, I was giving updates on Twitter. But at the same time, too, I was watching other people's videos, live videos and stuff. So I pretty much got to see the entire concert tonight, too, just not live. But uh, so what we'll do is we'll talk about the show. But let's back up a little bit before the show and uh, let's give a little overview of the, the tour. So this tour is going to be just a 15 date uh, tour this month. They're doing 15 cities. Obviously, Omaha was the first one tonight. And that's it. That's it for the year. Um, so, um, you know, they're just going to random cities and doing a lot of good, uh, good shows. So let's start off with, uh, merch. So obviously mm -hmm. we both got to see the merch. I I'm pretty impressed with it. Um, I'm surprised there wasn't a tour program. Did you see a tour program there? I did not see, uh, I didn't have a chance to go into the merch booths, um, today, Probably do it either tomorrow at the Sunday show or at the uh, Milwaukee show. I'm doing like 13 shows, so <laughs> I have uh, I have plenty of time to get merch. Yeah, uh, I just didn't do it today. Um, yeah, it was uh, it, it was good merch. I like the um, the shirt with the band. I think at the front or on the back. I I, forget, so, I, I think it was the second to last one. I believe. So let me put let me put up the photo that you had shared earlier of the merch so the first one was this stuff for people watching i don't know if people can see that there's one mm. i like next. the patriotic one i like the one on the left yeah the so, left yeah what i really liked was the the patriotic shirt grew on me uh i i did like number four the one with john on the front it's, it's similar to this one um and then um like you said, number five, this one right here, is my favorite one too. I, I'm yes, gonna, I, I love the hoodie too. I love that it says Bon Jovi Forever on the front. Uh, what I thought was pretty cool too, back in this house tour, they did a vintage Slippery When Wet t-shirt. Mm. This tour, they're doing a New Jersey uh, ah. Raglan shirt. So I thought that was pretty cool. And one last thing to touch base on the the merch is the poster with John on the front in the cities. I wish they would have done the whole band on that poster. You know, with the, I, I, I still get the poster and blah, blah, blah. But I think it would have been a lot cooler if the band was on it, you know? Yeah, 100%. Um, I just, I, I, I wasn't going to get a poster regardless because I have too many posters. Uh, I have like three or four Bon Jovi related items in my apartment. And I think that's enough. Yeah. yeah so the, the I, collector uh, the collector in me says i have to have it even if i, I don't know, put it up yeah so but um 
Yeah, so so let's get into uh, so who was the opening band again? I I own is that right? I, I own something. Um, she was really talented. Um, and the funny thing was, I still couldn't believe I was there for Bon Jovi. It didn't hit me until like ten minutes before the show, yeah. before Bon Jovi came on. I'm like, holy crap! Obviously, use a different word, but we're trying to keep it, things PG here, right? Right. I was just like. I was like, holy bleep, like, I'm seeing them. And uh, I saw an empty seat in the fourth row. I was seventh row on Phil's side, and I saw fourth row smack center in the middle of John. So I went there. Um, I talked to the security guy. He was cool with it. And the thing is, you know, like, if you're trying to, like, move up a bit, always be nice to the security guard. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, like, I, I got to watch about half the show from that seat. Up until the acoustic set, um, up until we don't run, um, which we'll talk about in a bit. Yep. But uh, overall, I know I'm going off track here, so let me uh, back up. But yeah, she was really, really talented and pretty cute yep. too. So. Yeah, I saw a video, a brief video of her performing. Yeah, she she sounds really good. I want to check out some of her uh, her stuff. So let's get right into the the show um mm -hmm. so let, let's start off from the beginning to the end um an overview one thing i did notice which is okay you know because i understand i noticed that a lot of the songs were tuned down a key probably to mm -hmm. help uh john's voice which i i uh, overall i, I this show Obviously, you were there live, and I saw it through video, so I'm sure you can have more experience here. But yeah. on my end, I was fucking blown away. I could not believe how incredible the band sounded, John. I mean, you could tell there was all this energy built up in them that they just poured out, and they all sounded amazing. Yeah, um, you know, it took me a couple songs to get used to it, but about halfway through, I was like, okay, that's fine. Um, you know, he sound John sounded amazing. He sounded great. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, if he needs to tune it down another tune tune down some songs another like another half step, so be it. Um, you know, I I tune down a lot of my songs half step too because it's a lot. Um, I, I actually like that the key of D a lot. The uh, I don't think it's the tuning of D. I like the tuning of D a lot. Um, I like you know the way that certain chords sound yeah. in D. Um, it's a great tuning to play in. So I, I'm actually kind of happy they did that. I, I was just shocked. That's the thing. Yeah, but it was still good. So let's uh, let's start off with, uh, I'm going to pull up the whole, the set list that I have here. Well, we got so over let's here. Let's start off with the intro. Now, yes. so the, the, the sound of it was the 2000, or uh, this house is not for sale tour. No, it was the 2013 it was, tour. Was it 2013? I think it was. Yeah, that was the No, that was the 2013 tour. I'm willing. You want how much you want to bet? I don't want to bet, but I'm I'm pretty tired here. But let me. It was the 2013 tour. I promise you, it was the 2013 tour. I'm gonna promise you. Gonna... Winner, winners buy losers buying burgers. Yeah, Kevin uh, knows my uh, my after show ritual. Yeah, loser buys burgers. Um, I'm pulling. Oh fuck me! You're right. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, that was the two. I was confused on the two. Yeah, that's right. No worries. No worries. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. So they they had the same sound, but it wasn't the same visual uh, opening. It was kind of you know, which is pretty cool. So I was not expecting Limitless to be the opener. I was expecting Beautiful Drug to be the opener. A lot of fans were. So what was your reaction when uh, when you were expecting Beautiful Drug, that you know that beautiful guitar hook, and then you got Limitless, which is a great song. 
Yeah, so what happened was, so I can usually um, tell what's going on by what guitars, you know, Phil or um, or Shanks is using. Like, I can kind of tell. Yeah. So um, I saw Phil come up with an SG, and I know Phil typically uses kind of like the Flying V for um, Beautiful Drug. I'm like, wait, I don't know, maybe he's changing up guitars. Limitless starts, I'm like... I, it was cool. It, I think Beautiful Drug would have been a better opener, but Limitless was still good. Um, yeah. The, the way that they did it, they had a good emph to it. What I really liked was they, they added that outro. Yes. Phil yes that was awesome. That was awesome. And I was like, because for the last two years, I, I, I like Limitless, but I always thought the chorus lacked a little emph and it lacked a guitar solo. So it was really nice to see Phil adding a solo to that. You know, it sounds even better. And I think the song even sounds better live. Mm -hmm. You know, so, um, yeah, anything you wanted to say on Limitless other than that? Yeah, um, well, that, that's basically, this, to sum it all up, I was just scream jumping up and down. I was just so ecstatic to see everybody on stage. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I... I, I think that song was missing the solo, and that was like my biggest criticism of Limitless when it came out. Like there needs to be a solo. Um, and overall, that song grew on me after listening to it for the last two years. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, but this, uh, with with the solo added, yes, that really uh, made a top tier for me. So yeah. it, it was great. Yep. I'll let you introduce the next one because I know that you're going to die happy now after the second song. Please, <laughs> this is literally what happened. Um, I thought I was just going to go into Lost Highway. So, like I said, I'm pretty good at like sniffing out the set list based on what guitar John uses, Phil uses, Shanks uses. Um, and I thought it was John got the, got the black guitar in Lost Highway. It's typically within the first five songs. Yeah. So I'm like, and I lost highway. I've heard that song so many times. I'm just like, okay, like if, if I go with that, a few shows without hearing lost highway, I'm not going to be mad. I don't hate that song, but I, I, like, for example, sleep when I'm dead wasn't played tonight. A great song, but I went, I've heard it. I think at 21 out of the 22 shows. Yeah. And the only one I didn't hear it at was at a promo show. So, you know, one song without sleep, I'm okay with, you know? I'm not going to cry about it. So um, when I when he when he started going like, bomb, ba -bomb, ba -bomb, ba -bomb, ba -bomb, I'm like, no, no fucking way, bro. No, 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 no way. And then like jumping up and down, like yeah. I was so happy. What was, what was the crowd's reaction to that? I mean, because obviously this is a deeper track. And for people, most people that are watching that are listening to this podcast know what Radio Save My Life is. But just in case, it's a deep track. It's actually an outtake from Keep the Faith that was later up or put on the 2004 box set. So what was the crowd's reaction? I mean, could you tell the diehard? I, I, I wasn't paying attention. Okay. Um, I was just the one that was going cra the craziest within the first. And obviously, the people in the front row were singing. Yeah. Because, like, the front row right in front of John is basically all VIP packages. Yep. But, uh, yeah, like, the people um, next to me, I don't think they knew it. I was just, like, jumping up and down, and everyone yeah. was just kind of admiring me and happy for me, which I thought was pretty cool. Yeah. And, like, I had – that was a song that I wanted to hear. Like, I'm doing – 13 out of the 15 shows i'm doing um uh every show by indian in st louis so um i wanted two songs on this entire tour and we've had this conversation so many times oh, and i yeah. got both of them tonight <laughs> and i'm just like <laughs> you yeah. know i'm so happy what i thought was so good about radio too was the uh that bridge instrumental you know I uh, it, it was it was really cool to see Phil because Phil's never played. Well, one time in the 2013 they played, or maybe 15 they played that. They played, they played it in 13 and in 15. It was probably played less than 10 times within those years. Yeah, uh, I think once 2013, once in 2015. It was played more uh, than once in 2013. I'll tell you that. I'll, 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 I can confidently was, say that. But it was played more with Richie than it was Phil. Phil only yeah, played I, once or twice. No, well, it wasn't played at all until Europe. 
Richie, yeah. and uh, Richie had already left, but I think it was played a couple uh, a couple times in there. But any, I'm any, not gonna, it, it's not important. Yeah. Not anyway, so it was cool. Play. It was cool to see Phil play oh, yeah. that song again and see him really into it because before I think he was just playing it and stuff, and, but this tour he was really really feeling it. Um, anything else you want to say about radio? I. Uh, I think this says it all. The, the smile says it all. The next one is Bad Name. I really don't have much to say about Bad Name. You know, obviously, was, I thought that was pretty good. Uh, I thought Phil sounded incredible on that solo. Did he do the solo? Yeah. Or was it Shanks that did it tonight? I, I, I don't remember. I was just in a daze the I, entire time. I, 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 I'm sure it's... I have no idea. I, I can't remember. That. But anyway, I think, I think Phil usually... Uh, does those solos um but yeah it, bad name is just bad name you know it was a good good performance and uh um the next one is we weren't born to follow and i was glad to see that outro used again because i think they did it a few times on the last tour 2019 yeah and yeah. uh i know yeah, the 2020 well, um, no 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 um what happened was um that that outro uh, he did both outros he did the um let me hear you say yeah 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 or, yep. or repeat adds that for a minute which i thought was pretty awesome i remember when he, in europe he'd walk out onto the catwalk mm -hmm. and get the crowd crowd all re revved up um then uh there was like a phil phil did an outro too um yep. as seen in um a couple of uh, like the nashville show last year uh, yeah for i think it was honda or something i forget yeah that, the private show yeah which um, i, I love so, it. i'm glad that they're continuing that it's one of my favorite songs um it's one of my favorite songs i love hearing that song live yeah uh you want to introduce the next one it's my life yeah um like reading from my set list. Yeah. You know, you're you're looking on setlist.fm. I'm I got the I'm actually actual I'm actually list. I'm actually looking at the set list that I wrote down during the oh, show. Yeah. But the he uh, before it's my life, um for people that don't yeah. know, there was a video that circulated um uh of people in, in Ukraine uh you know trying to you know doing their thing and uh they played It's My Life and so that video went viral and uh, so John dedicated that song tonight uh, to the people in Ukraine, which I thought was pretty nice. But uh, I'll let you. Yeah, it's, about... it's awful what's going on there. You know, my entire yeah. uh, so I family, my whole entire family is basically from Ukraine. Yeah. Um, and you know the town that they grew up, the town that my mother grew up in, is basically destroyed. Uh, it's really sad, but uh, it's really cool, you know, to uh, that that it was dedicated to them. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so that it was a good performance of It's My Life. John was, I believe he was, like, jumping on the monitors, I believe. Yeah, he was song. pretty uh, – I, I like the way that he did uh, The Bridge. I don't remember that. I Like I said, I, yeah. I, I was kind of, like, in another world, you know what yeah. I mean? It, it, for, I see, I saw it, uh, it on video, so – but I think it was tuned down, and just the way that he kind of sang, don't bend, don't break, baby, don't back down. The way that he sang that, and then the way the band came in, it just sounded phenomenal. Like, I never heard it like that. You know, I wish I could prove it, but, you know, people will that's, see videos and stuff. And I thought it was great. That's why I like the detuning. That's why I like the detuning a lot. Yeah. It's one of my favorite tunings. Yeah. Um, I wrote you know, a lot of my songs. Even the yeah. song I played for John, I played that in detuning. Mm -hmm. Which, uh, that's a story we'll tell another time. But. Exactly. Um, next, one and more. the next one is great. Just older. You know, that was great to kind of see in the middle of a set list. And uh, I remember watching the a, a video, the video and, uh, you know, it went black for a second and then you see, uh, Tico, the boom, 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 boom. And then you see John cause he was facing Tico at that time. And you go, you see Tico, boom, 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 boom. And then John turned around with his guitar and like, boom, and then starts strumming his guitar and you just older his playing. Man, I, I had, like you probably did for uh, Radio Save My Life, I had a huge smile on my face. I'm like, yes. So what did you, yeah. did you like that performance of Just Older? I, I liked it. And funny story, I thought it was Captain Crash. So I started doing this thing, right? <laughs> did anybody else in the audience do it? 
<laughs> start a, so. start a Catholic. A, I think it's only a Europe thing. I think it's only a Europe thing. <laughs> I know. Oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, just order was was great. Uh, do you want to introduce the next one? Yeah, born to be my baby. Yeah, Phil broke a guitar string during that song. I saw. Was it the end of the the perform? I, I noticed it at the end. Was it the end when he broke it, or? I'm not sure. I just looked over and I'm like, oh, my homie broke a string. <laughs> and he's still like, nothing happened, you know. And then John's like, yeah, shit happens, basically. Oh, he said that. I didn't catch that part. No, like he. That was like kind of his attitude. Like he made a face towards Phil. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone, everyone on that stage has um, broken one. I'll let you introduce the next one because I want to introduce the one after that. Because okay, I was so, so next one is um, beautiful. Uh, no, um, wait, are we on? We're on we just, beautiful drug, right? Okay. Yep. Um, so, like I said, I think those should have been uh, the slots between beautiful drug and limitless sherbet and flip flop. I and agree. That would have been you. a lot better. Um, yeah. But I, I think it was great. Um, yeah, it was. Uh, I was just jumping up and down. Uh, he, John sounded great on that one. Um, very good show. Very good song overall. Yeah. Um, like I said, this is one of my. This has to be one of my favorite Bon Jovi shows from a setlist perspective. Yeah, I agree with you about "Beautiful Drug and Limitless." I, I think on this other thing, it's better swapped. What yes. I was really looking forward to with Beautiful Drug was seeing Phil's uh, guitar solo because it's, Ooh, it's yeah. phenomenal. So I was really looking forward to that. And then that bridge um, that John does, you know, that fast little spiel. He didn't that, miss a beat. He didn't I know. Miss a beat. He, was, he, was, I mean, he was on. He was on top of it. Next one, which I was so happy to see because it's one of my favorites on 2020, was Let It Rain. And I love the way that John kind of started it. It's just him and he's doing it slowly on guitar and he's starting to sing the, the first verse to Let It Rain. And uh, I was, I, I, I probably had a smile on my face the entire time. My wife was already sleeping and she knows it's open at night. So I told her I was probably going to be excited and, and she told me don't wake her up. I woke her up anyway because I was so excited. I said, Look, they're playing, let it rain. She goes, All that she went back to sleep. So I I was still so happy. And when it was I was really, really, really shocked that John did the harmonica at the end. I was like fucking blown away. You know, he's done a harmonica on Born to Be My Baby, Homebound Train, American Reckoning. Am I missing any? And, and you know, I, on, I the, on, so. on the record. He doesn't do the harmonic on that at rain. So I was so happy to uh, to see that. I was like, wow, that is amazing. What did, what did you think of the performance? I mean, how did it sound live in, in person? So the way he was playing at first on the acoustic, I thought they were doing Love Can. Really? You know what? Yeah. I, think, I think I got that initial thought, too. I, I did for a second. Okay. And I didn't do it. You know, soon as he started singing it, I... Uh, but it was kind of inter- It was kind of nice just to. It was to a cool hear. intro. It's yeah. A cool intro, yeah. And you know that you know how much I love that talking meanie. So it was kind of nice to hear him play, hear the sound of that guitar, and uh, uh, yeah, but I, I loved uh, Let It Rain. He's had that guitar since like the '90s, so it sounds yeah, great. Yeah, '94. It sounds great. It's a, it's a beautiful sounding guitar. Um, but yeah, uh, you want to do the next one? Sure. Uh, Keep the Faith, uh, which I watched that one just like any other tour. I thought it was great. John uh, was really energetic on that one, I think, you know, with the Moroccan. Like shaking his ass and all that. Yeah. Uh, the I think he really picked up the energy on the second chorus and, uh, you know, the solo. And then the rest of the song, he was just on on fire. Um, at the end, I, I didn't catch it because the one video I was watching ended. At, at the end of Keep the Faith, when the band does the jam session, did John leave the stage momentarily? Yeah. Like he yeah. usually does? Okay. So, and it was just the band that played for a little bit, obviously. Was it, was, it, so I didn't get to see the jam session yet, only a, a part of it, but did it, is it as long as it was on the last tour? Last yeah. Tour? It was? Yeah, maybe a minute longer. Um, took like another three, four minutes. 
Yeah. Which, my, my next question to you is, did you see, obviously I saw John moving around a lot during the entire show, but did you also see like Phil and Shanks kind of move around a lot or kind of just stay in their stations? I, I, I want to say, you know, I, like I think they moved around a bit during the yeah. um, solo section. I think sure. I, I, I really just don't remember, honestly. That's OK. From what I saw, it didn't seem like they moved around too much. Phil kind of moved around quite a bit. But um, well, let's get into the, ne so the, now the next portion, which we, we kind of predicted this because a couple weeks ago, John had posted a photo of the band in a circle rehearsing and what kind of gave a little bit of something away was Tico was on his squeeze box I think that's what it's called and uh David was on the accordion and everyone had it like acoustic guitars and stuff and so I remember I think I called you or you called me immediately after that photo was like, like oh my god dude they're they're fucking doing an acoustic set and like we started throwing out all these different theories about what was going to get played acoustically so we knew it was coming and yeah. so something new on this tour was the whole band um you know i don't want to take away from you sharing your experience you know just from what i saw was you know the band came on this day stage like i think there's three of them on each side right and then john was in the center yeah. wearing a rolling stones t-shirt that was cool you know we, we after we get to this acoustic like, let's talk about their wardrobe a little bit mm -hmm. but uh three of them on each side and they did an acoustic set so i'll let you kind of talk so after keep the faith ended how soon did the acoustic set kind of appear like two minutes after the band did the band stay on stage the entire time during that transition uh, i want to say yes we did okay uh so i think I'll, I'll i think i i, I can't I, so I believe before, they did i believe they did they were like changing guitars and all that shit Okay, so before we get into the songs, what did you? What was your overall uh, reaction to the the uh, acoustic set? Um, honestly speaking, um, it could have been better. Um, obviously, I understand. You know, we don't run. I understand that. Um, it, it's an interesting take for sure. Uh, I'm just used to the. Um, hard rock song not like yeah. a bluegrass jam or like a country jam which is you know it's for a good cause i'll happily support that so i get it you want to promote that yeah um but i i think it really could have benefited with an i'll be there for you or a bed of roses mm -hmm. uh or i never say goodbye and always acoustic type of thing yeah. from uh this love feels right that would have been a lot better over american reckoning yeah, that I, I so let's get into that song because that's the first one, the acoustic set. I don't want to get into politics, and mm -hmm. I I'm for the black um, Black Lives Matter. I'm all for the song. I, I enjoy the song. I like it. I I I don't care. I don't want to say I don't care to see it live, but you won't see me crying if I don't ever see it. I've seen, I, I've seen, I saw John do it uh, at the runaway trip last year and uh, it was great. I, I love the harmonica part. I just, for me, it's too political. It's a good song. I stand I for what it, it stands for. I just think it's too political to put on a Bon Jovi show. That's just my take. You know, like I said, I'm all for the black lives matter movement and all that. I just I I think the songs are heavily political. Let's let's take them off the set list. That's just my personal opinion. But overall, yeah. I thought from what I saw of the performance, it was great. I loved it. You know? It was a good performance. Um, I something maybe you might not have picked up on is he did the, the harmonica intro to "Prove It All Night" by Bruce. No, not "Prove." Uh, Promised Land, the Promised Land. Fuck, I fucked it up. Um, it's he did the intro to the Promised Land by Bruce. I Springsteen. thought. I thought it was the same. I think I actually put that myself. I don't know if I got that from, but I actually thought it was you the got same for me. song too. No, 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 no. Um, I will actually give me. That, that's okay. That's, so that's okay. Moving on. Um, yeah, I, I only caught a, a half of that of the uh, the cover. Um, but let's let's go into uh, we don't run. So okay. I, correct me if I'm wrong, but John announced that 
next week there's going to be a global citizen concert benefit concert for the people in ukraine and they re-recorded we don't run and also the performance tonight will be broadcasted on that um concert am i correct yeah that's correct he introduced it and okay. um and he played the song and that's when i was told to go back to my seventh row seat which oh. i actually like better than my uh fourth row seat yeah, enough, because there was this one guy uh, standing right in front of me who was a lot taller than I was. That's the yeah. mo that's the worst part about sitting on the floor, and you don't have to, and you, and you don't uh, realize that, and uh, that's a struggle you do not know because you're you're much short. Taller, you're a much taller guy. <laughs> you're yeah, you're, you're, you're like short. four inches shorter. You're like a leprechaun to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, so did, did they say that they were going to release a digital version of that song? I don't think they did, but I, I, I think they will um, and donate all the proceeds, obviously. Yeah, because, you know, going into that song, I, I thought, you know, I know you touched base a little bit ago, a little, little bit ago about it. Um, I thought it was Your really good. Now. Yeah, all right, now it's better. Now it's back. It, I, I thought it was really good. Uh, obviously, you know me, I'm a sucker for slower stuff and ballads. Mm -hmm. and so it, it was definitely interesting to kind of get a different take on that song. I would have never thought about that being done acoustic, you know, because it's such a heavy hitter in your face type song. So to hear it like that, I was like, at first, I was like, eh, this is kind of strange. And then all of a sudden, it just kind of got to me like, you know what? I dig this. It's pretty good. So yeah, I don't I don't see them doing this every night. I really I I don't I don't you know I think like you kind of said a little bit ago, they gotta put different songs and if they're gonna do an acoustic set every night, which I they are, you gotta throw in different songs every night. Yeah, I think we'll get um, American Reckoning again in uh, St. Paul because that's unfortunately where that incident happened. Um. Maybe we'll get, uh, but we need an, a better roses or an I'll be there for you in there. At least one, yeah. one of those for every show. Yeah. Well, that, that's what I was going to ask you too. Is what songs you know would you hope for? And you kind of answered that. You know, me personally, you know, since they're throwing out deep tracks now, you know, I'd love to see you know it's hard letting you go or something to believe in. You know, all about loving you. Um, you know, there's better roses acoustic they could do, like you said. Um, so the next one is, um, which I think they only they only did three on the acoustic. Yeah. The next one was Saturday night, right? They did. Yeah. That was done uh, acoustic. Standard. Yeah, pretty standard. Uh, yeah. I think. Um, you know, that's always great to see acoustically. Um, but this this performance was one of my favorite Saturday night performances. Yeah, I, it was the typical performance that I've seen before him doing an acoustic. I thought it was good because it's a little broken down slower, which I, I enjoyed. Um, so now back into the electric. Now, did they take a break after the acoustic set, or did they just go right into the electric? Yeah, go right into the electric. It took okay. them about a minute. Um, so my next question to you, and this is a very, 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 very important question. The next one was, who says you can't go home? And my yeah. question to you was, when they played that song, was it all right? <laughs> How long have you been waiting for that? All, all night. So and everyone that's probably watching this podcast knows that you get a, a thousand it's <clears throat> all right at the end of – and they, they, he did a thousand it's all right tonight, which is fine. That, that's happened. That, that's a known thing for a Bon Jovi show. Yeah. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. What did you think of that uh, performance, though? Um, it was a good performance. Um, he sounded good on it. But, yeah, it's just a typical, you know, yeah. song that you expect to hear on the set list. Yeah. You want to introduce the next one? Lost Highway. Lost Highway. I don't really have anything to say about that one. That one, I, I, I love the song. I think it's great for a road trip. And I, I, I enjoy seeing it. I know you don't. I enjoy seeing it live. It's, it's not that I don't. Every night. It's not my favorite. It's not my favorite. I, yeah. That's exactly. I don't need it every night. Yeah. Maybe uh, one in three shows, I'll be happy, but not every night. Are you holding a condom wrapper? No, it's a tea wrapper. Oh. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> I, I don't think they make condom wrappers this big. Yeah. Um, 
So the next one, which I don't really have anything else. <laughs> I don't have anything on the next. Oh, back to Lost High real quick. I did. I love the the bridge to Lost High. I always love, you know, with the the painter saying of long as told tell this boy which way to go. You got the car, you know, blah blah blah. I love that part. You know, I love the way that he kind of does that whole spiel. And uh, so I thought that was good. Uh, next one was Wanted. Typical performance. You know, it was great performance, but nothing extravagant about it. I don't. I don't think. You know, same old. Yeah, you know, I was I never. Think it was detuned. I think it was detuned to D. I believe. I, I I I had that feeling too, and I was gonna. That was gonna be my next question to you. If you thought it was tuned, yeah, I thought so too. It was good. Yeah, um, yeah I, I I like I like I like playing songs in D, so I thought it was good. But the thing, it, it took me like about until half the set to kind of get used to it. Yeah. Um, next, I'm one, used to them playing everything in E flat. Yeah. Uh, the next one is Do What You Can. Now, did they play? I, I, I kind of didn't really see any of the, that performance. Did they do the country twang version or was it the more of the rock version? It was the rock version. Yeah, because I guess they, couldn't really, they wouldn't really be able to do a country unless they had some kind of audio to make a country sound. And, um, and obviously not the female vocal either. Um, Yes, yeah, so I, I really, I, I'm really, I really am looking forward to that one. I got to see John do it uh, at the Runaway Trip last year, and it was, it was great. But I really want to hear the band do it live. What was your uh, reaction to that one? Well, I knew it was coming because uh, John had the capo on the first fret. Yeah, that's kind of one of the things that I know when it comes to guitars. Um, so I'm like, oh yeah, do what you can, and everyone's just like was shocked when I predicted it correctly. Yeah, you know, I'm surprised that song was not in the earlier of the set. You know, like I even think that'd be a good opener, to be honest with you. You know, that's I I think I concur. I wasn't yeah. expecting it to get played. Same with Lost Highway. Um, yeah, I, 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 I figured. A second, I figured. I was just like, oh wait, we got we got no Lost Highway tonight. Okay, well I'm gonna cry about it. But uh, you know, I figured with uh, do what you can. Uh, to to me, when I listen to "Do What You Can," I I always feel like it's a triumphant song because you feel like when you listen to it, like, "Hey, we got through this together." And you know, we we are at the tail end of the pandemic. I'd say, you know, knock on wood. You know, so when I listen to it, I feel like we got through it, and it's kind of like a time. Um, here I am, quoting John, a moment in time, <laughs> as he said, a witness a, to a, history. A witness to history. And uh, so I, I think opening up with that song would kind of be a triumphant to that is. I agree. I agree. Yeah. So um, next. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. So the other thing, he did change a lyric in uh, Do What You Can, which is, um, though I'll keep my social distance, what this world needs is a hug. And now we find the va- we found the vaccination. There's no substitute oh. for love. Oh. He changed it. Good. Good, good, good. Yeah, yeah, it could be kind of odd to say until we find the vaccination. We found the vaccination. <laughs> yeah. Hold up a sign saying, John, we found the vaccination. Um, all right, next one is This House is Not for Sale. Uh, that was good, I thought. Um, I, I really enjoy Phil. My my favorite part about that song live is Phil's outro. You know, when they finish the final chorus, then all of a sudden, you know, John Shanks does that hook. And then Tigo does the build up, and then Phil just lets loose. And uh, I thought that was great. Anything you want to say about that one? Yeah, it, it's just weird seeing it so late in the set because I it's usually like for the last fifteen shows. It's if it's not the first <laughs> song, it's like the third song. Yeah, yeah, because last tour it was always like the first song most most of the tour. It was always the opening song, and and uh, so it was kind of weird to see it so late in the mm-hmm. set. Uh, next one is Have a Nice Day. Typical performance. It was good. Um, I, I feel like John was kind of getting tired during that one, though. Oh uh, well, they they did detune it. Um, he, I thought he did a fantastic job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think he did too. You can tell. Um, no, I, I thought it was great. Um, and obviously, you know, we gotta show this. Yeah. See, in your Instagram story. I, you know what? I know you so well from over the years. I know you so well now. I knew when Have a Nice Day would come. I knew you'd, because because you got that tattoo after the tour, after the last tour. Yeah. And so I knew you would show your tattoo with the song. But uh, 
Uh, so yeah, my the, favorite was when I showed it to John when we zoomed with him, <laughs> and yeah. I'm just like, "What you got a tattoo?" Yeah. Um, so so the next one is "Live Our Prayer." Now, so this would be the twentieth song on the set list, and this would have been so the show started at eight thirty, and actually uh, more like eight twenty. Yeah, I, I yeah, if, it, it, but anyway, that's what the schedule is supposed to be. But anyway, so ten thirty your time, they started prayer. Usually, you don't see prayer to at least maybe the last fifteen minutes, um, which I guess it would have been the last fifteen minutes. Yeah, it wasn't the last. Show didn't end. Yeah, usually the song with bandwidth. Yeah, so. Um, obviously, you knew they were going to come back for an encore because they didn't do bad medicine yet. So I, I remember I was even texting you after uh, prayer was over, and I, and I said, "There's no way the show is going to be over." Or you said yeah. that to me. Like, oh yeah, bad medicine's got to happen. And so prayer, prayer was good. Uh, you know, Detuned one thing as well, which was I liked it. I liked it better. I liked it better. Detuned to D. Yeah, and it, it, like John's appreciation at the end of that song too, like he was like looking around and like big smile on his face and just so appreciative of everyone that came and stuff. And uh, you know, then obviously they did the good night spiel and then left the stage for a couple minutes. Now you know what you went to the show. I'll let you introduce the next. This one was so I, fucking good, and and <laughs> I don't want to give too much away, but you and I both knew that this song was going to get played in the last year and a half. That's all we're going to say there. That's all we're going to say. But I'll, I'll let you introduce the next one. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I was not expecting that song tonight. Well, you, you didn't was, mention that. What, what was the song, though? I was expecting um, a Dry County or an Always Tonight. Yeah. That's what I was expecting. Because... Um, I, I was talking to you before the show. I'm like, you know, I think they're going to open up with Always for the encore. And uh, then I saw uh, D- John mouth uh, something to Lemma. And Lemma said, I thought Lemma said, let it rock. Like, oh, let it rock. Okay, cool. And then it's like, then I hear it, bop, 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 bop. And I just go, hey, shit, I'm talking about jumping up and yeah. down. I'm like, now, Yo. we, we, we didn't mention the song, so let's mention so people know what we're talking about here. Oh, right. Love's the only rule. Love's the only rule, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I hope that continued. That was so good, especially at the end when he's screaming, uh, Love's the only rule, and he holds that note and roll. I was fucking blown away. That was probably the best vocal performance tonight that he did was Love's the only rule. Yeah, he, he really shined on that, pun yeah. intended. Now, uh, I didn't, uh, the video at the end cut out. So, did, you know how on the Circle Tour, uh, they did like a, a break after the final chorus and they did the whoa, you know, that slow build up and then all of a sudden they do it, do it the final chorus again. Did they do that on the show tonight? I believe they did. I, I believe. Um, or was it kind of no, just like actually, staying out? He did the whoa. Oh, oh. Let's watch another video of that. But I think yeah. um, he, he really extended the whoa. Oh, oh. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. I, I, yeah. I, I was too busy enjoying that because those were the two songs, Radio and Love's the Only Rule. I wanted those two songs and I got them tonight. So yeah. this might be one of my favorite set lists I have ever seen. Yeah. Well, the next one, and this is the last one, and I was surprised that this, that, well, we'll get to that, I guess. So the last one is um, Bad Medicine. They did. And like I told you, in between the last, uh, between prayer and the encore, I said, they're coming back because Bad Medicine has to be played. Yeah. I was surprised even Runaway, and we talked about this earlier today, that Runaway would, would have to be played. I'm surprised. I told Runaway, you, I told you it wasn't going to get played. Yeah. But, I um, so, it. Bad Madison was played. I was like crossing my fingers for a medley. I was like hoping for a cover or something, and it never happened. But I thought Bad Madison was great. What do you think of it? Yeah, I, I, so Bad Madison was my least favorite hit. Now, with the way that it sounds in D, I love it. Yeah, it's amazing how, it. how that changes, you know. Um, but I thought they were going to end with sleep when I'm dead. Yeah, that would have been good. See, now, so I'll get into it, I guess. So when they finished the Bad Medicine, you know, they did the one more time thing. They did the chorus again. 
But when that song ended, I was like, oh, please play one more. Because I saw that there were still 15 minutes left of the of the show that they could have done. You know, because it was 1045 showing at 11 most times. I was like, oh, there's, they're, they're going to do one more song. And then I saw John wave the band forward and they did their bows. And sometimes they'll do another song. You know, John said, okay, one more. Or they'll leave the stage and they'll come back up. So I, I was watching. Starting one more one more song chant. I tried starting it. Yeah. But no one did it. I'm like, okay, you don't want to hear another song. Fine, you know. And, make, and so make, make your choice. And John was the first one to leave, right? John was the first one to go down the stairs. Mm -hmm. So I was, you know, because the, the, I was watching a live video. So I saw like the lights still stay dark for a few seconds. I was like, oh. Yeah, that happened. Do that a happened. second encore. I was like, great. And so I'm like, I'm, I'm thinking in my head, okay, what are they going to play next? Runaway or Sleep When I'm Dead or maybe another deep track. And then all of a sudden you saw the crew come up the stage and you saw the arena lights come on. I was like, oh, fuck me. Come on. You know, I was just so happy tonight. I know you were happy tonight. And uh, one thing before I, I want to talk about the wardrobe. So the wardrobe, I think, was a little different than what John usually kind of wears. Um, you know, obviously I think this tour is more of a relaxed um kind of tour you know it's just a, it's just a 15-day tour that's all that's happening this year and i don't know john seemed more you know like wearing a rolling stones t-shirt i thought that was pretty cool i don't know if there's any rolling stones connect i'm not a big rolling stones fan i appreciate and respect them but i wonder if there's a connection between omaha and rolling stones that he wore there i, maybe I don't think so just, just wore so. he just likes the stones yeah um, the I leather like his leather jacket i'll let you talk about that yeah i thought that was cool I thought it was really cool with the America thing on the with the American flag on it. I think it, um, it had the stars over the right shoulder, then the flag on the back, right? It's something, it's something like it's patriotic, something like that. Yeah, I thought that was. Cool. Yeah, I liked it. I liked it. Um, uh, and New that, Jersey versus everybody. That was a cool shirt. I see when he was wearing that jacket with like the yellow stripes over it, like the entire "Loves the Only Wrong." I'm trying to think, what is that? I knew like the bomb said everybody. And then I saw verses, but like, I'm like, what's versus everybody, you know? And then obviously he took it off for bad medicine. And mm. uh, and then it said, yeah, New Jersey versus everybody. But I th even the band, like David kind of looked more in relaxed clothing and, and stuff, which was pretty cool. Phil looked pretty cool too. And the, the whole band just looked, looked great. Yeah, was, this was a great opening. Yeah. I think this was the best opening night for any show that they, for any tour that they've done. Yeah. And, and you know, if this is the way this is going to go, and if this is only opening night, can you just imagine, you know, tomorrow, Sunday's show, then your, your Milwaukee show? Oh, man. I, you know, I've already been in anticipation. You know, as we speak, right beside me, um, I have all my, you know, my wife's and I's luggage packed up, ready to go. So I'm literally just less than 48 hours I'm on a plane to Milwaukee. And I'll be seeing you in about 48 hours. And... Yeah. We're going to get some burgers. We're going to see some good friends, see a good band, it's the best band. And it's going to be great, buddy. After tonight, yes. Yes, this is my confidence. I mean, my confidence was already through the roof. But, man, if, if he starts out with radio, like, this, that was, like, the best moment, one of my top moments. I had a Bon Jovi show, and the second song is the radio saved my life tonight. I'm like, no. Yeah, but I I think I truly because I I don't want to give any I don't want to give a lot of things away here you know obviously you know there's gonna be more deep track deep tracks gonna play now I'll leave it at that so look at the poster look at the poster yeah exactly you want to know deep tracks look at the poster none of those so songs were added by, we, by accident yeah. so we know the set lists are gonna change every night we know it's not gonna you know because obviously runway's got to be get played here and there and and this this tour is just it's supposed to be for fun i think it's just to get the wheels the wheels in motion have fun play some deep tracks play you know see what works because i think what they're doing is gearing up for next year with the 40th anniversary tour it's no secret anymore john has mentioned it publicly now so it's no secret there's gonna be a 40th year anniversary world tour so i think what they're doing just getting the wheels in motion playing some songs to see if like love's the only rule would work in a crowd or if just order would work or radio save my life you know so i i think they're going to do that with other deep tracks too so yeah we'll see anyway buddy 
I want to thank you for coming. I know it's 1.37 a.m. my time. and I talk. still got the adrenaline. I can go yeah. for hours, man. But I got to work on this video and get it posted. So, but anyway, buddy, I will see. I know I'll probably talk to you at some point later today, and uh, I'll see you in just a couple days. Yeah, I'm excited. You know, thanks again for having me on, and uh, I look forward to coming back. It's always a pleasure to come. Coming on Bon Jovi discussions, and I actually got recognized today for being. Oh, okay, on the okay. So, all right, tell your story about that real quick. So a fellow by the name of Austin uh, recognizes me because what happened was I, was I, I know up, too. Yep. What happened was during Have a Nice Day, I wanted to walk up to the stage and uh, you know show my tattoo, right? So I see a security guard just guarding my section, right? I was in row seven, so I see a security guard trying to make sure people don't storm the aisle. So I take one look, I'm like, nah. Because this security guard looked like no like no fun whatsoever. You know what I mean? Like I can you can kind of read their body language and just like, nah, you ain't getting past me. You ain't getting past me. It's like if you've seen Lord of the Rings, it's like you shall not pass <laughs> type of thing. So I'm like, oh, okay. And then this guy taps me on the shoulder. He's like, yo, were you on Bon Jovi discussions? You know Jerry, right? I'm like, yeah. So shout out to Austin. Um, I'm actually yeah. gonna be seeing him tomorrow at the uh, Minneapolis show. Yeah, he's a great guy. I talked to him. Yeah, he's pretty cool on Instagram. He's a good guy. So, all right, buddy, stay on for a second and end the recording. Thank you again for coming on, and I can't wait to see you in a couple of days. Same here, man. Take care. See you guys. Bye.